Project of the day are new O-rings. These are pretty crunchy. Well, those don't even have O-rings. And I was able to find a set. And after we do that, it goes in there. All right, first task at hand, new O-rings. I'm gonna do them here. I got to buy new tools. This is what you call a detail job. New plug, new pan, because the old pan, the drain plug was never machined and you can't get it out. So new pan and very importantly, new apparently OEM conductor plate from, from Euro Parts. Doesn't have the MB logo on it, but it looks pretty good. There we go, one clicker, two clickers, new conductor plate, which we're gonna drill a hole in today. Click, I'm gonna double check that one. Yeah, it's seated. This one pushed in and then it like fell seated and then I saw it actually pop in. Now these, uh, as a heads up, they, they literally just push in. They're an interference fit and um, they felt like they pushed in pretty good here. We'll push that guy in. In fact, we'll pull that one and we'll just ooey gooey. There we go. There we go. I can see they're seated here. You can't. I can. Now, where did I set my impact? Just kidding. Um, these bolts are different lengths, so make sure these hold down clamps. You sit next to the solenoid when you pull this apart, especially if it's going to be a few days like this was, waiting for parts. So install the leaf springs and torque to 8 newton meters and 71 inch pounds. Torque converter lockup operation. I'm going to be making a post on the forum about this because there's not a lot of good information. Long story short, when the torque converter wears, the extremely large piston uh, ends up holding more fluid behind it that is in the torque converter. When you start the vehicle cold, the centrifugal force actually engages what's left of the torque converter lockup clutches on a cold diesel engine, in my case, at significant altitude most of the time. What happens? It stalls, or if it doesn't stall, it like chugs at 300 RPM smokes, and you think the van's gonna explode. This is all over the forums. People blame tunes, people blame tons of stuff. But if you just Google 722.6 cold start stall, which I guess is something you just wouldn't Google, but I guess you could. Um, if you do that, what you'll see is that this is quite common on Mercedes-Benz vehicles. There's a Sonics kit that puts springs in the torque converter. You tear it apart, you put new clutches in, you actually put springs to push the clutch apart. Um, you can just put a new torque converter and it will go away for a while because the clutches will have very little wear. But due to a very aggressive lockup, in particular in Sprinters, this might not be present in like ML SUVs, Dodge Dakotas, whatever. Due to very aggressive torque converter lockup programming, uh, the, the damn torque converter is always trying to lock. Like you'll be just cruising kind of slow to lock up and you'll get these crazy vibrations through the chassis known as rumble strip noise. Well, that also causes the torque converter to wear. So by reducing the authority of the lockup solenoid to command it shut, which by the way, it spends a lot of time slipping. It's a wet clutch, that's okay. But by reducing the command ability of the solenoid, you can reduce the wear. You can cause the transmission to feel a little looser, right? Um, it just drives way better. So there are three, uh, credit to Dr. A, by the way, on a, a Sprinter Source, but there are three drill bricks commonly used for this mod. If you have very light rumble strip noise, you may consider a 56, a number 56 drill bit. Most people do a 55. 
some people with really bad rumble strip noise that don't want to put a converter in it, go ahead and drill a 54. I'm drilling a 56 today with a brand new OEM Mercedes-Benz converter because I'm willing to give up like a mile per gallon of fuel economy for a much looser filling transmission that lights the turbo up quicker, way less lag because the converter doesn't have to unlock to get the RPMs high enough. Um, and I'm geeked about it. So how do you do it? You can't see because I'm not showing you. Uh, we'll get there. Okay. In fact, we'll get there now. This is the torque converter lockup circuit right here. This is a plate. We're going to drill a hole in it. We're going to drill a hole so that the commanded signal that goes to here, you can't see a diagram, but maybe I'll throw it in the video. This is the reference signal that moves a piston that allows high pressure to the lockup circuit. So you're effectively, let's use electronic terms because that makes me comfortable. You're effectively putting a resistor in the source before the transistor so that you can reduce uh, the total output. If you had software access to this, like HP tuners, which boy, wouldn't that be nice. What you would end up doing, what am I doing? What you would end up doing is going into the tables and, and maybe taking out 25% duty cycle for this solenoid or something like that. You generally take out some fairly large percentile and then do a drive test and see how it dries. Um, I've never had this off. The bolts are all the same length there. They're the same length there. There. Boy, there's some stuff that wants out of here. That wasn't in the forums. Oh, just a couple springs, okay. No balls fell out. And wouldn't you know, magnetic schmooey, that's old door converter clutch, is right where I need to drill, right in the center of this hole right here. Normally you have to mark it, but not me. So let's pull you over here. That is the piston. When this pushes in, more torque converter lockup. When it pushes out, less. We're gonna bleed just a little signal. Uh, in the tuner world, this would be the, uh, the poor man's boost controller where you just drill holes in your wastegate line. But again, we're gonna relieve it here. And um, I'm gonna do the minimal drill bit. I can always go bigger. I really don't have to do this. Uh, given the new converter, it should work great. But you know what? Loose is fast. That's what I want. I don't want the converter lock up all the time. I don't want that buzz sound. So I'm going to do this. And worst case, I can take it out and zap it with the TIG welder. And nobody, uh, well, you know, then it doesn't link anymore. And then, then I can undo it. So we are going to just put this camera back. Number 56 drill bits. They're easy to break if you're ham fisted. They come in a 12 pack, so maybe that's gonna encourage some ham fistedness. And then uh, I read the reviews because like I wanted a good drill bit. And apparently what happens is these things will not fit in a chuck. So uh, if you're buying the drill bits and you're starting on the 54, which is aggressive, the 55, which is normal, or the 56, which is small, which if I called Dr. A with a new converter, he'd probably tell me not to drill the hole, but but I wanna, so I'm gonna. Um, you're gonna need that chuck or a compatible ultra mini chuck or one of those. This very inexpensive Amazon O-ring removal pick tool set appears to be also a punch set. Three. That put <laughs> okay yeah wow that really worked that worked a little too a little too well don't push <laughs> presuming that is in frame it drilled a perfect little tiny hole I get to use all these quotes. Focus, use something or other. I wiped the schmooey off. It's all. We're gonna find something to fill it in as well. Oh. 
before schmoovy. After schmoovy. Just like this stuff just wipes off. And it's everywhere. No matter no no matter. No no wonder these transmissions do crazy things when they get old. Because metal paste just gets everywhere, including over the circuit board. So it's got a little fillet, it's clean, there's nothing sticking up. Good to go. Okay, I'm cheating, but I'm gonna be like super gentle. And it's, it's flush against it now. Real low power. Stop. You hear a rattle, I'm in trouble. Real low power. It's all been started by hand. Okay. So it was all the way flush. It was torqued from the outside and pulled, well, from the outside and the inside one. Outside and the inside one, all of them. Uh, evenly in, and it has not been torqued yet. Tighten screws to four Newton meter. So here's the FSM. Oh, okay, I just I just give up. But anyways, four Newton meter side. Click outwards. That's a shout out to you when we watch this. I hope it I have the world's most brittle solenoid covers, which like somehow survived me. So those get clipped on. I mean, I, I swear they're like, they're like a potato chip that has been fried way too long and left out in the sun. I'm, I'm totally chipping the transmission over. That's a good idea. Um, you'll see there's two boards here because I didn't want the uh, input shaft resting on the ground. Uh, I may as well oh, do the remain. Be real careful with the shifter when you're putting this in. There's like a little plastic guy that drops on this steel rod down here. You can kind of see me jiggling it just a little bit. Um, and you just don't want to break that off. Insert the selector valve. I did that and I was careful. Install the torque socket bolts and torque to 71 inch pounds. Install the filter. And so I'm just going to lightly start these all by hand because in a previous life it used to be a bolt stripper and then I got tired of fixing it. Install the torque socket bolts figure three uh, to 71 inch pounds. Install the oil drain plug 71 inch pounds. Doesn't say anything about order But we'll do the center ones first. Okay, four, five, done. Now you get a filter. I bought a new transmission pan. That's so excessive. Ooey gooey. So when you wiggle it, it, it does pop down. There is a spot for it. I also swept the garage out before doing this and mopped the floor. You can't tell, but but it did. Okay, so whoever worked on this pants before stripped nearly every single bolt uh, that holds the pan on. So there's some goofy stuff going on and you'll see. So the, uh, the pan goes on with the same torque as the valve body. 71. Click. 
Now I got that on there. It's doing a tighter, tighter, loose, tighter, tighter, loose. But it's about to go click and be happy. This one's a different bolt. Because someone decided just to throw a English something or other in there. Tie it up. I almost want to stop. Oh, I did. It clicked. I'm happy. Click. This one also has a nut on it. I kind of zapped it a little hard. Yeah, it's done. This is the Hazard Fraught Harbor Freight, possibly in frame, transmission jack. Really nice microfiber towel and double it over. This is ridiculous. So that I don't scratch that up, which I just kind of don't want it to. Okay, it's right at those lengths. Okay, welcome to Friday Night Wrestling. Uh, Hands on wood. Uh, eh. Okay. Uh, that's the dipstick. I want to pick this up, but I don't want to hurt myself. But I'm going to do it anyway. Perfectly centered. Now we put the seatbelt on. This is so I can roll it all around. It may not look centered on here, uh, but it is definitely centered on the support structure to the pan. And I don't want like, there's just no reason to shift it. The weight's all here. This is empty until the torque converter's in it, which I guess will be soon. Ta-da!